all welcome to simple engineering engineering simplified i am neetu rahul today we are going to discuss about bonding forces in solids the topic in the first module in electronic devices if you are new to this channel please consider subscribing let's move to the video Electronic devices. Subject code is eighteen EC thirty three for the semester three students for VTU University. So the discussion is on bonding forces in solids. The type of bond or the interaction between atoms that depend on the particular atom or atoms in the crystal. If there is not a strong bond between the atoms, they will not stick together to create a solids. So between the atoms, we need a strong bond and this bonding in that solids is can or can be categorized into three ionic bonding covalent bonding and metallic bonding so ionic bonding is a coulomb interaction between oppositely charged ions we can take the example of a sodium chloride materials which is denoted as nacl of group 1 and 7 Covalent bonding is the sharing of electrons between two atoms, so that in effect the valence energy shell of each atom is full, and the materials of group four gives the covalent bonding. In metallic bonding, it is loosely bound valence electrons and are easily given up in the ion formation. So, going into detail about ionic bonding, electrons are transferred between valence shell of atoms, and an atom. donates an electron to the other atom becomes a positive ion which is called cation and if an atom is accepting an electron it becomes a negative ion called anion a coulomb interaction between positive oppositely charged ions is called ionic bonding and ionic compounds are made of ions and not molecules ionic compounds are also called sols or crystals ionic bonding we can explain with the help of sodium chloride nacl so here the sodium atom is shown where it is having an atomic number of 11 so first orbit will contain two electrons second orbit has eight and the last orbit has only one and chlorium if we take atomic number is 17 so it has Seven electrons in the outermost orbit. So Na, that is your sodium, it becomes positive after giving this one electron in the outermost shell, and this chlorine that will accept or it will receive an electron from the chlorine and becomes negative. So each Na plus ion exerts attractive force on neighboring Cl ions. in the lattice nacl structure all electrons are tightly bound to the atom so that is shown over here this blue colored is sodium where it will give its outermost electron and become na plus and that chlorine it will accept that electron and become cl minus so the outer shells are completely filled and have configuration similar to neon and argon since there are no loosely bounded electrons nacl is an insulator so here sodium chloride you can see that its outer orbit is not there because that one electron it is accepted by the chlorine so here you can see that uh, the color is different that is the uh, sodium ion and it it electron is given to the chlorine so chlorine is having seven electrons by accepting that one electron from the sodium it becomes eight in the outermost orbit so next is covalent bonding two atoms share one or more valence electrons in this way each atom thinks that it has a closed outer shell because the outer shell is closed these materials are typically insulator although some might also be some semiconductors between non metallic elements of similar electronegativity so if you take chlorine two chlorine two electrons per bonding is done so 
here you have silicon and the two electrons per bond is shared with another silicon so that its outermost orbit is fully completed so you can take examples of oxygen carbon dioxide all this comes under covalent bonding next is metallic bonding the bonds formed in metals it holds the atoms strongly the outer shell is partially filled usually by no more than 3 electrons will be there in the outermost shell and they have a low a low ionization potential hence the valence electrons can be delocalized throughout the metals there is a cloud of electrons around the atoms delocalized electrons are not associated with a particular nucleus of a metal instead they are free to move throughout the whole crystalline structure forming a sea of electrons so for the uh, metallic bonding it has a sea of electrons because all the uh, electrons they are free to move throughout that whole crystal structure then remaining non valence electrons and atomic nuclei forms a positive ion cores and are immersed in a sea of electron clouds the electrons and the positive ions in the metal have a strong attractive force between them this holds the lattice structure together therefore metals often have a high melting or boiling points and the metals exhibit properties such as malleability ductility conduction of heat and electricity lustrous etc the good conductors of electricity they are this is uh, if they are having a metallic bonding the bonds that is formed in the metals they form a good conductor of electricity for example you have iron aluminum uh, sodium etc they forms metallic bonding so here you can see that uh, the metal iron is shown in positive and the electron there it form a bond bond between the uh, metal ion so uh, this is about the bonding forces in solids and its three different categories like ionic bonding covalent bonding and metallic bonding hope this is clear for everyone if you find this useful please share it with others and do subscribe my channel thank you